Say what you will about the military-industrial complex, it continues to field some of the most deadly combat systems in the world. While the backroom dealings behind the development of the Bradley and even the M1 Abrams were suspicious, to say the least, both systems fared well, dare I say, even excellently. And it's okay to poke fun at the revolving door between military high command and defense contractors. After all, that's what separates us from the Reds. We don't go to jail for saying the quiet part out loud. But for the military's top leadership, playing too close can put you under investigation. Take for example, Assistant Vice Chief of Staff David K. Hebner. In 1999, the Army's Chief of Staff, General Eric Shinseki, envisioned a plan to make the Army more mobile and deadly in urban settings. At the center, he saw the M1128 Striker. Any sane person would rather ride in a Striker than a Humvee, or even an M113 Gavin. But we're not here to talk about the Striker's superiority. We're here to listen to another story about the zany happenings of the military-industrial complex, about how sometimes acquisitions are influenced by stock options. In this case, between the ever-present general dynamics and an aging Army Lieutenant General, the striker was supposed to be a stopgap between the Bradley and the Humvee, but it was also a job application. General Eric Shinseki assumed the duty of the Army's 34th Chief of Staff on 22 June 1999. From his new Pentagon post, Shinseki directed that the Army would transform to meet the future of worldwide threats. The ultimate goal of his vision became the Army's future combat system. The goal was that the Army would be able to deploy an entire brigade anywhere in the world within 96 hours. This would require a whole host of new equipment, including a new standard set of combat vehicles. However, it would be many years before this system would be in place. The aim was by 2010. So an interim solution using modified current production vehicles was suggested. This came to be called the Interim Brigade Combat Team. In reality, this concept was nothing new. It had emerged under President Jimmy Carter in 1979, ordained as the Rapid Deployment Force, or RDF. In a bit of ominous foreshadowing, this Carter-era policy was aimed squarely at the Middle East. The Army needed an off-the-shelf, lightweight vehicle for this modern Rapid Deployment Force, so they turned to the Marine Corps and their LAV-25, eventually selecting the updated LAV-3 variant. The earliest rendition of the LAV-3 would appear in the AVGP, the 6x6 Armored Vehicle General Purpose of the Canadian military. Despite its similar appearance to the Russian BTR family of vehicles, it was never intended as a counter to them. It was simply lightweight, fast, and capable of filling the role of either armored personnel carrier or infantry fighting vehicle. In 1981, the United States Marine Corps put out a request for an armored vehicle faster and more mobile than the M113 Gavin to satisfy these RDF requirements. They would select the LAV-25, the AVGP's successor. The multinational intervention in Lebanon and the invasion of Grenada revealed that modern wars were being fought at a pace even faster than was first anticipated. The LAV-25, built by General Motors Canada, which would later become a joint venture with General Dynamics, would enter service in 1985, having its first combat test in Panama, and would prove quite successful. The next test would come sooner rather than later, Operation Just Cause and Desert Storm would further prove the need for a faster deployment and faster response. During the blitz through Kuwait, M1 tanks were halted from advancing due to outrunning their own supply lines. Back in 1999, General Shinseki's vision of faster, lighter vehicles 
deployable in 96 hours, seem more timely than ever. To meet this lofty new goal, the Army released an operational requirement that the vehicles be air transportable by a C-130 Hercules, already in a combat-ready configuration. In Shinseki's white paper, he anticipated this would be an all-wheeled formation. The Army invited interested manufacturers to enter their products in a platform demonstration held at Fort Knox, Kentucky from December 99 to January 2000. Four companies submitted proposals. ST Kinetics with a Bionics, a Singaporean Bradley lookalike, Stair Diameter Putsch with a Pander 6x6, United Defense, rather bizarrely, with a two-vehicle package consisting of a modified M113 Gavin and an M8 armored gun system, and the General Motors General Dynamics Joint Venture, with an already combat-tested LAV-3 8x8. However, before the LAV-3 was even selected as the Army's interim brigade vehicle, it would be mired in its first controversy. On November 19, 1999, Six weeks before Lieutenant General David Hebner was scheduled to retire from his post as General Shinseki's Vice Chief of Staff, General Dynamics announced that he was taking up a newly created position of the company's Vice President of Strategic Planning, arousing the suspicion of the Government Accountability Office. Less than a year later, the Army awarded the contract to General Dynamics. At $4 billion, the deal was the largest lump sum combat vehicle purchase since the Bradley program in 1980. United Defense filed a challenge to the contract award, forcing the Army to issue a stop work order. In its protest, United Defense said its M113 and M8 package would be ready one to two years earlier and at about half the cost of the LAV-3. Disgruntled United Defense employees would also pursue private investigations into the matter, citing financial disclosures showing Lt. Gen. Hebner, tapped by General Dynamics, had received 4,000 shares of General Dynamics stock as part of his new hire package, valued at $104,000 in 1999 money. Supposedly, General Shinseki's 1999 white paper on an all-wheeled formation was a thinly veiled hint that the contract would be awarded to General Dynamics. But in April of 2002, the first LAV-3s, which cost $3 million apiece, more than 50% above projections, rolled off the assembly line. Presiding over the ceremony, Chief of Staff Eric Shinseki. During his speech, he officially designated the new vehicle the Striker and singled out Hebner for a special thanks. As it turns out, the Government Accountability Office found no wrongdoing. Apparently, in a July 1999 memo, Hebner had already disclosed financial interest in General Dynamics and officially recused himself. United Defense would then officially join the ranks of the reformers, continuing to insist on a conflict of interest and touting the superiority of the M113 Gavin platform. In September of 2002, the Army conducted a congressionally mandated side-by-side -side test of the Gavin and the Stryker. And Stryker crews just operated more effectively. Interior space was less restricted, the quieter ride allowed crews to hold conversations and plan missions, and Stryker drivers could sustain longer operations than Gavin drivers, who could receive hearing damage after just five hours of driving the vintage APC but the strikers would meet their real trial by fire during the 2003 invasion of Iraq. Media reports would point out that their thin armor was not rated to withstand RPG attacks, and that adding slat armor increased their weight, making them prone to rollovers and reducing off-road effectiveness. A select few were even highlighted to show their computer systems froze in hot and stationary engagements, leaving their crews blind and without communication. However, upon further investigation, these same outlets would be somewhat puzzled by more than a dozen interviews from commanders, soldiers, and mechanics. People that use the Stryker fleet daily would unanimously praise the vehicle. The defects outlined in the report were either wrong or relatively minor and did little to hamper the Stryker's effectiveness, they would say. In the end, 
This is just another story about a relationship many would describe as codependent. The military industrial complex continues to field some of the best combat systems in the world, with the Striker being one of them. General Shinseki would leave the army in 2003, later being tapped by the Obama administration to become the Secretary of Veterans Affairs. Despite his 2014 resignation among some controversy, he would continue to go on speaking tours, recounting his experiences in Vietnam and advocating for members of the military and the Asian Pacific American community. Lieutenant General Hebner's stock in General Dynamics would balloon to 28,000 shares. He would also retire in 2014, cashing out at $36 million. United Defense, the manufacturer of the Gavin and the M8, would go on to be acquired by BAE in 2005.